You know, I was complimented on my driving today. Were you? Yes. I got back to the car and there was a note on the windscreen that said parking fine. <laughs> when the camera's on, it's all a big bit of fun on the big red shutter club. On the big red shutter club. Awesome. Hello and welcome to the Red Shutter Club. I am here today with the one, the only, <laughs> Danny Taylor. Hi, yeah. Uh, who, who I think right. might need a bandage. You all right, Danny? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. How's it going? Nice to be here. Thank you for having me on the Red Shutter Club. No, thank you for coming, Danny. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah. So we met at the Monday Club. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, by um one of the musical saviors of, um, of of this great city, Mr. Ian Prowse, that, that brought us together for Monday Club. Mm -hmm. as, uh, I, as I joke with my family, my adoptive scouse father, Ian Prowse. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, goodness. I can't call him my adopted scouse father. That, that would just be weird. <laughs> I've got enough fathers anyway. Oh, goodness. So, oh, Danny, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, my name's Daniel Taylor. I'm... Um, I, I'm born and live in the city of Liverpool. Um, I don't have an age because I'm an actor and I believe if I told you that, then it might go against me in trying to get acting work. <laughs> I, I need to be, you know, we've got to be as employed, you know, you, you know, it's a bit scarce out there, especially right now with the, <laughs> with the, um, with the, well, it doesn't really affect us. There's an actor's strike and writer's strike in America. But I believe that's stopped now, actually. I believe it um, has that's, as well. That's all been um, sorted out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think... Um, but yeah, I'm an actor. I work as an actor between um, here in Liverpool and anywhere that'll have me, basically. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a prostitute to my profession. <laughs> I, I've never or rarely ever turned down any work... <laughs> Since I left drama school, Weber Douglas Academy of Dra Dramatic Art, may I point out, um, back in 1995. So here we are. Um, and I write music, which I've done since I was a teenager, probably before then. Um, and I also produce theatre shows and direct shows. And I teach acting online. I'm also a mentor. I don't know how. I'm not trained well, to be a mentor. On. But I kind of fell into that there was a couple of people said could I help so I did and I do that as well but I can't there's not enough I need eight days a week there's a song there some, somewhere um, really <laughs> but yeah that's what I do um, so everything that I do it kind of works or in the arts that's uh, I'm a creative person so what are you working on at the minute what am I working on at the minute? Um, well, I've just um, had um, a really, really good um, meeting about a, a a play which is a small tour next year. I've just I've just finished some Helen Forrester stories, mm -hmm. which toured the UK. That was great. Um, Helen Forrester was uh, uh, a lady that moved to Liverpool in nineteen thirties from the southeast of England. Very wealthy family. Um, it was when the big depression was happening. And anyway, this family moved here with great ideas and expectations. And of course, it never worked out that way. It's quite a bleak story, to be fair, Helen Forrester had. But there was a load of novels that she wrote. So we did the adaptations for that. So I was just getting over that. That never answered your question there, Shannon. Um, what am I doing next? Um, well, I'm doing this. I've just met the writer. And it's called... Um, about a shipwreck, about a ship that that um, sank off the sort of coast here, and it's about all these sort of, which happened in the eighteen hundreds, and it's about all these uh, sort of, if you like, these um, s local sort of lifeboats going out to rescue the people from this ship, and of course this was in the eighteen hundreds, so. Um, 
no one knew that that lifeboat was going out. No one knew that lifeboat was going out. No one knew that life that lifeboat was mm-hmm. going out. No one knew how many were on the ship. And, of course, um, one of them, it was to do with Southport, um, Lytham, St. Anne's, and, no, Lytham and St. Anne's, which is, they're all in close proximity. And it's about all these lifeboats that went out and only a few people returned. Um, and, of course, back then... It would have been everyone knew each other, so a lot of families would have been um, affected by this. And the people that did get back, it's about the the story of that. It's never been put on stage before, so it's a wonderful writer called Emma Vaudry, who's a, a dear friend of mine. So she's asked me if I can do that. Once I've done that, I go back onto a a, a beautiful show that I did um, earlier this year. Um, which is because I'm a musician as well. I, I, um, it's about George Harrison, which of course there's not been so much done about George Harrison because he's kind of had to live in the shadow of these two sort of um, <laughs> these these gargantuans in Lennon and McCartney, um, which is not a bad thing, but it's really a a show about his life post Beatles. Mm-hmm and what George got up to. It's really, really lovely. It's got incredible um, imagery that sort of throws itself behind me. I nev- I've never seen it because I'm always looking that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we did we did a tour this year. We did we took it up to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It did incredible, incredible response there. Then it went on a sort of 15 theatre tour date mm-hmm. um, earlier this year. And through popular demand... Um, a lot of theatres have picked that up for next year, which nice. begins in February the 3rd at the New Brighton Floral Pavilion. And it's all about, sorry, let's get back to it. It's about George's life after the Beatles and what he got up to. And I don't think people are that aware, really, that he went on to become an incredible film producer. Mm-hmm. Really, by accident as well, mm-hmm. in a way, because... His close friend, um, Eric Idle, was looking for funding. This is, this is the life of Brian, yeah? The, yeah, yeah. And it was the life of Brian. And, and what happened was no one would go near this film because mm-hmm. it's perceived blasphemy. Mm-hmm. And, of course, George was always thought outside the box. And it was very much about the... Um, well, he, he, he wanted... He, George was asked... Why he invested? He invested two million pound, remortgaged his house, uh, so he could make the money readily available. I know that sounds a bit weird, but they needed cash quickly, um, so he put two million pound towards it. And he was asked why, and he said, "I just wanted to see the film." <laughs> and it, he went on to say, "It was the most expensive cinema ticket in history," mm-hmm. and that's what happened really. And, of course, Life of Brian took on its own sort of status, cult status. And what followed then was lots of other films. Um, yeah, so he, he he became quite sort of, quite courageous, really. I think it was quite a courageous thing to do. Is it? If you've got that much money? I don't know. I'd say it still was. Two million mm-hmm. pound back then. That's that's pretty big. Um and yeah, it talks about his putting the Travelling Wilburys together, which was arguably the first ever pop supergroup. However, I'm not completely sure that's true. But then thinking about it, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, you know, um, I've got a brain fart going on. Uh, Probably that seagull that's screaming outside the window. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, Eric Clapton, um, sorry, um, Bob Dylan. Uh, you know all that whole crew. That, that that's in, that's insane. Getting all those people together in one room, um, and they actually named their first single or one of their first singles after a box that was sat in the corner. They actually built this studio in Bob Dylan's garage studio, mm-hmm. and there was a box in the corner that said "Handle with Care," and that was the name of the song. Um, but yeah, we talk about that. We also talk about the concert for Bangladesh, which was arguably the blueprint for Live Aid. Um, and his music. 
and his life, children, um, and the different people that really influenced him. So, yeah, that's what I'll be doing next year. I'll be doing that in January, the end of January, February. That'll tour for two months, straight after the play that I'm doing about the shipwreck. A lot of what we've talked about on this show so far, because usually I'm interviewing people who are solely musicians or songwriters, is how to make it in music. So how do you make it in the entertainment industry as an actor? Like Entertainment what or music or both? Both, anything. Well, first of all, I mean, I think you've got to be a little bit nuts for a start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because we certainly don't do it for the money. I always think that even with young people that I teach, especially with acting, I think you've got to be very honest with them. And I think you've got to ask them questions. Is it something that you want to do? Or is it something that you have to do? Mm -hmm. And that's first the first question. And if it's something that you just have to do, then it's something you should be doing. That's my belief. I think there's some great expressions as one I learned years ago, which is, I think it's Judy Dench actually said it, which take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself seriously. And I take that through life. I don't expect anything. I never have. Everything's a bonus to me. I think these are all things that I use almost as to protect myself in a very precarious and um, competitive industries in acting and music. And I truly believe that, you know, we've all got our own journey, our adventure. It's an adventure. And I think if that's what you want to do, I think you should just do it anyway, regardless. And I think the more you do something, the more you improve at it. If you're passionate, if you're into songwriting, the more you do it, the better you'll you'll get at it. Um, and I think it's a very personal thing. Things like songwriting, I do, but they're stories within themselves. Um, and I think if you truly believe in it, then you should just keep getting them out there. I, 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 how do you become successful? I don't know. I think with acting, I think you've just, you know, people always say, oh, you're very lucky because you're doing this play or done that musical or done this. You know, I left drama school in 95. When I left drama school, I did go into a lot of TV shows like, you know, different Brookside, The Bill, Ellington, Game Art. I mean, you know, I was, I was doing really well. Then I went and did a lot of theatre. And then as of gotten older I've gotten to do some really big and amazing stuff which I won't brag about on here but I'm really proud of it um like something I did recently with the George Harrison thing that I was telling you about we did it we did the show at the Philharmonic for his 80th and it was full 2,000 people and we had a an 80 100 strong choir behind me and I'm singing these beautiful songs and talking about his life and I've got a Philharmonic, some of the Philharmonic Orchestra, Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra playing behind me. And you do have those moments where you go, oh my God, how did I end up here? Oh God. And you know, you check yourself, but then you go, hold on a minute, how many sofas did I sleep on? How many plays did I do for free? Mm -hmm. How many sacrifices did I make to get to this point? Mm -hmm. And I made, and I, I, I slept on, always whatever and I have I'm not saying you should do that but that's what you sacrifice in order to get to where you need to get to sometimes so it's it's self-belief yeah we're all a little bit mad but I think most of the world is anyway um, and it's it's just being true to your passion and your art but don't make it any more than that just keep it simple and keep knocking on the door mm -hmm. Eventually, they do open, I believe. Well, they just get they just get fed up of your knocking. So <laughs> they end up letting you in. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So there's two questions that I've been asking everybody. So uh, the first question I've been asking is, what is a song in the Liverpool music scene that you've heard that you're just like, oh, I wish I wrote that? On the Liverpool music scene? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a, that's a good question. In the modern day, I mean, what songs re really evoke the energy of this city and the sound? Probably the Lars. Mm -hmm. 
that they they really um John Power he really captures the city he in Prowse funnily enough uh, does this train stop on Merseyside that's for personal reasons that always evokes a lot of stuff for me um in terms of songs I'd really probably go back to the the days of when my mum and dad were growing up in in the city and actually going to watch gigs at the cavern mm -hmm. on your lunch break um you know they didn't have alcohol down there but they you know they just went and watched bands and I, it would probably be one of those bands it would probably be one of those early Beatle records mm -hmm. um you know like love me do or something like that you know mm -hmm. i think for me that's what would i would go for this but the, then that's a whole minefield we've got poets and all kinds you know we've got a it is, it is. the great liverpool poets at like roger mcgough and people you know and mm -hmm. writers and alan bleasdale willie russell you know is is just an abundance of writers and sounds and that that evoke so much from this this port of a city and the second question um, my producer suggests that I ask everybody this. The whole Liverpool music scene. Yeah. M there's a massive scrap. <laughs> there's a what? <laughs> there's a massive scrap, massive Is fight. it there? <laughs> well, now? There probably is outside on Matthew there's not a They're not fighting now, are they? No, that'll, that'll come in, in a few hours. I thought that was the weekend up. when people went fighting. <laughs> but the whole music scene ends up in a scrap. Who's coming out on top, Danny? Uh... Not me. I'll be old. I'll be old in the coat, <laughs> probably with a pint in the other hand. I'll have a coat here and a pint here. I'll probably be in that. Uh, I'll be in a white stone. <laughs> <laughs> Stolen his jacket. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I don't like all that stuff. Fighting. It's. Uh, I leave it to the. Leave it to the bigger boys. Okay, this song's called "Get Home to You," and um, I basically listened to Otis Redding for about a month. And this is what came from that. I walk. This road don't lead me there I talk But you don't hear these prayers I need To get home to you Oh Lord I must keep strong I'm with you I read Only for the branch to break I see Lord I see Only for this old heart of mine to break Lord I need to get home to you Lord I must keep strong till I'm with you I believe I believe that there will be a day When no sweet, sweet laughing arms Give me oh so safe get home to you 
Oh Lord, I must keep strong till I'm with you. I believe, I believe that there will be a day. When those sweet, sweet loving arms Keep me oh so safe Oh Lord, I need To get home to you Oh Lord, I must keep strong down this road that is all so long Till I'm in the sweet, sweet, sweet loving arms Loving you Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Danny. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, is there anything you want to plug before we get going? Pardon? Is there anything you want you want people to check out before we get going? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, check out Shannon. He's an amazing. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Danny. If you want to come and check me out, come check me out. Um, Daniel Taylor. I'm on ESQ. I'm on it. I'm not really a big tweeter because... Um, I don't know don't know any words with more than two or three syllables, uh, you know, and I, I I definitely can't carry some of those arguments off that people have on there. So I'll leave that again to the others. Um, but you can get me on Faceache, Daniel Taylor, ESQ. Um, I'm not sure about the ESQ. I'm not sure where that came from. Um, or Instagram, ESQ. Uh, there we are. Um, I'll be releasing an album, actually, next year called Sunny Days which is produced by Gary Murphy at Glass Studios in Birkenhead. Um, and it's uh, my first proper album. I know, it's taken all this time. Oh, I've got one online called The Party Is Over, but that's just a load of demos, really. They are good, actually, but there's a... It's called... Uh, have a look at that if you want, it's on Spotify. Never had any money for it, like, but there we go. So thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for tuning in. To get home to you Oh Lord, I must keep strong Till I'm with you Look straight into camera Are we filming now? Bye Bye We did okay there I think that was fucking that good went really well I thought that went well So, hello and welcome back to the Red Shutter Club, gotta reach behind me. Um, I never put my desk in the right place when I do these. <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a great intro. <laughs> you know what's funny is, um, it took a good prob probably couple of months running the show before people understood why it was called the Red Shutter Club. Some people who've been in my apartment and like slept drunk on my couch next to these <laughs> shutters, and they're like, "Why do you call it that?" <laughs> Um, but I am here with some friends from Newcastle. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hi, we are Alfie and Alex, and we are Park View. Hello. Lovely, lovely. Tell us, tell us a bit about, um, I guess, Newcastle's music scene. Ooh, that's such a good question. We've never had that question before, but there's a lot, there's a lot more than you'd think. Because, like, like, we listen to, like, we listen to loads of music, but especially Tom our rhythm guitarist listen to a lot yeah, of local music. Like yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. loves dire straits. Um loves the police and like stuff yeah. like that. So obviously like Sting, as you'll know, as a state states mm -hmm. person yourself, Sting was um mm -hmm. from round here. Yeah. Um and then obviously more recently yeah. on like A C D C Johnson. No, I, know. I think it's, it, but it's especially right now in terms of like Grassroots culture. It's got to be one exciting. man. It's very exciting. Oh, what do you mean, Sam Fender? Sam Fender. I, 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 was, well talk, I was talking grassroots. I was talking the. Do you know oh yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on our sort of level, there's so so much going on as well, yeah. especially mm -hmm. with Sam Fender like coming through the ranks like in the last couple of years. Yeah. 
has been so much more. It seems like almost like time and investment, yeah. like put into the local scene. Yeah, like, definitely a lot like, of new energy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. loads of like new venues open up, and um, like I don't know. There just seems to be a lot more sort of like push for it than we've seen like in the last couple of years, especially now. Which I mean is great because there's loads and loads of bands on a similar scale to us yeah. that are just sort of looking to to get somewhere, yeah. I guess. Well, so tell us tell us a bit, about, a bit about your band then. Like, what is what is your genre? What is your focus on? Well, um, we definitely we definitely rock. We are definitely kind of mm-hmm. indie rock. Um, I think uh, the we've, we've we've put two singles out prior to this, and we've got two more coming out soon, early December. Um, and I think we're definitely settling into that kind of indie rock sound with we have such a wide breadth of like influence and stuff, especially, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of our, our, our bassist is very one way and, you know, we're he's all, very experimental. Uh, yeah, he's very, <laughs> he's very like progressive rock and stuff like that. And I think we tr- we try and take all of that in to keep everyone excited and invested and it's uh it's definitely yeah very fun to kind yeah. of try yeah. and put all of that together you've got to keep it interesting yeah. as well you've got to keep it interesting changing you do it up. to keep to keep the band engaged it is so difficult to actually keep a band going so how long have you guys actually been performing and practicing as a band then oh well we started we started with just me alex and tom in my uni flat and um just like kind of just like jamming and writing like a few tunes and then later on, we got um, Josh, our drummer, and Louis came over to play bass. So I, th- I think it's pretty just been, much a year. Yeah, but it's just like up to a year. bang on a year now yeah. since ev- mm-hmm. since everyone joined together. Yeah, with like, and again, it's a sort of the same with performing. Like before, like before we really got like together properly. Like me, Alex, and Tom did a couple of like acoustic sets and stuff like stripped back. But when I'd was say like, this gig like junk. January? No. Before? Was it November? No, no, no. I think it was January. Was so it January? Yeah, yeah, I think I think our first gig was around January this this year, like earlier mm-hmm. this year. So not yeah. not very long, really. No, no, and and not not a lot of us really have. I I think this has been our first kind of, maybe not you, but I think for the rest of us has been our first kind of venture into like any kind of performing, any kind of. Mm-hmm. you know like being in a band or anything like that um but well do you want to explain you've done a little bit before haven't you i used to do musical theater when i was a kid <laughs> really that's that's kind of it <laughs> but yeah <laughs> hey it counts it counts it does count it does count i was oliver twist you were, you were gonna be a great yeah billy Elliot i was well. i would have been a great billy Elliot if i could dance <laughs> But, but yeah, that's oh my, my, my musical goodness. background in a nutshell. <laughs> well, uh, it seems like you guys uh, have a good thing going with the band. And even though a year's not that long, it kind of is. Because keeping a band together, oh boy, let me tell you. Yeah. I've seen some struggles with that. I have had some struggles myself with that. So what do you attribute that to? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I could see like a lot of that would just... I, I guess if you're just doing the same thing over and over again... It would get like I I I can see that happening and especially like like doing like if you're doing like the small gigs and like we like would wouldn't want to get into a rut of like doing gigs all in the same place like in the same venue with the same crowd like do you know what I mean like you want to like yeah. keep moving up so I guess like the the best thing we do is like we all want to just keep pushing like mm. why not yeah you know you're you've only all be got able to a do it similar once. level of ambition yeah yeah definitely. Yeah. And a lot of us have known each other for a long time. Um, in in terms of we we came up through school together. Um, I've known Louis for ages. I know Tom and Josh have known each other for ages. You've known Tom for ages. I've known yeah. I played I played football with them, and then I went to school with him. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sat next to each other in English. Not a lot of English, but yeah. You know. So we know we know how to keep each other around. <laughs> So, do you guys have any new material kind of coming out? I think you mentioned you've got two singles coming up, yeah? Yeah, we're going to do like a, a, a double, a double special. That's what we're going to do. I yeah. think it's like an A and a B really, isn't it? Yeah, but we're just, we're, we're keen to get as much as we can out there, obviously in a, mm-hmm. in the proper way. But we're just, I think we're kind of coming into a stage, we're on a roll and we're quite proud of what we're making and things. And we just want people to hear it. 
and um, especially if people have came to our shows a handful of times, you know, and, and more, um, these ones are ones that we played almost every time. Mm -hmm. So it would be like, you know, I suppose it's nice to get people behind and get, you know, be able to hear it outside yeah. and come to see us. We've got, um, so we're going to do an A and a B and we're, we're done it in a way. So one of the tunes that's coming out called Come Alive is um, mm -hmm. quite, it. it's for the rockers in the world, people who want to stomp their feet. And then alongside that, we've got an acoustic one that we do at all the gigs um, called Sleeping on Your Feet. So that's a get your lighters out and grab a girl mm -hmm. kind of moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we you gotta you gotta have all sides, man. You yeah, sides. we're touching all the news. Give the people the what news. they want. So, uh, if you've got these repeat people coming to gigs, it sounds like you guys have been able to develop quite a bit of a fan base. Then, yeah, so tell I was, us a bit about that because that's that's quite a hard feat to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I, it helps. It yeah. helps that like we're all we're all pretty sociable guys. So we, we, we like to round up the troops yeah. and get our mates to come to all the gigs. But most of them have stayed. <laughs> most yeah. of them have stayed coming. We do, we do have a really, you know, a really good supportive core group of mates. They're so good as well. Like the last gig we did um, was at a place called Little Buildings. And it was only a seven. It was like, what was it? 60, 70 cap? Uh, it was like 65, something like that. Something and um, like that. Yeah. we ended up like overselling on the tickets because like all the mates wanted to come. And like people were singing the songs back to us, and that was definitely the that first was, time. Yeah, that was. That was the first time I had had that. Quite and surreal, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna cry. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Oh god, it is a brilliant feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it's so yeah. it's oh. it's proper rewarding. Like it's so mm -hmm. good. Yeah. It's so it's a wholesome feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that here in the music scene, it's really cool. Uh, we've got a very supportive group of people i think john witherspoon explained it well of he's been in the scene for a while and um just all of the musicians here we know each other's songs we'll go to each other's gigs and sing each other's songs and that's like just this thing he's like don't take it for granted that's that's insane people don't do that so yeah. it is it is really really cool no, yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. we we definitely seen that like we go and see like especially like people who've supported us or people we support, we always try and go along to yeah. like something that they're doing. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a band. I mean the the first band we actually fully, <coughs> pardon me, as a five supported um a Manchester band called Kiwi, and mm -hmm. uh, we've actually kept really good in touch yeah, with them yeah. in terms of for two bands from two separate cities. We're hoping to do a gig with them next. Yeah, year, and um that's I mean for us that's definitely been an example of that. Um both supporting each other when new stuff comes out, both you know kind of dropping each other a message when we've mm -hmm. seen you know each other do well and that's it and that's another really kind of nice part about this you know the, the music scene at the moment to round us off here there's two questions that i've been asking everyone who's been on the show this season um so uh this will be a bit different because you guys are obviously in a different city in a different scene uh but the first question is uh what is a song uh from the local scene from from someone locally that you just wish that you wrote like a great song locally. I think I could guess yours. Yeah, I think I could guess yours. Um, I see. Do you know what? It's I. Every time we get asked about like a song from like the local area, I can't help but say this one, and it's by a band that we supported before uh, we had like the full band performing together, mm. and yeah. um. <clears throat> They call uh, this. What's the song called? It's um, when I see her. when I see her face by the Revolution One, and they're they're from like Whitley Bay as well. So it's like proper, very very mm. local to us. Yeah, and they're just they were really really nice when they played and, and we they've supported us since. Mm. So we definitely we've like kept in touch. And that song is class. It's a great song. First time I heard that song, I was like, shit. Yeah. Why didn't I really write that? Good. Yeah, really nice. Really. It good. is really good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, I would say, oh, you must have heard it because Tom Tom sent it to me. But um, Rendezvous by the Paper Boats. I don't think I've heard it yet. I've I've had like no time oh, to listen to anything. It's new. so good. Like <clears throat> it involves a lot of synths and stuff, which we don't really have incorporated at the moment. Um, mm. but like just a class song, you know, kind of lovely vocals on it. Ends it's with a lot of like harmonies and stuff, which again is something that I think we're trying to incorporate a bit more. But you know, it's it's definitely been 
feel where it's like, Fwa, mm-hmm. it's a great song, that. There's one more that I'd like to throw throw into the ring as well. Wow. Our very, very good mates are in a band called Baltic, and they've been around in the music scene for ages, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, And they, they are just, like, they're literally, they're like, class. our best mates, and they are they are so good. Like, mm-hmm. they, they've got to have a FIFA song one day kind of good. Yeah. And um, they've yeah, got a song yeah, yeah. called Lucy, and that shit will stay in your head for a good few days after you listen to that. That is such a good song. I remember when Charlie showed me that, I was like, ah, oh, man, that is good. That really is good. really mm-hmm. good. And they're so good yeah. live as well. They're so yeah, good they're live. so they're tight they're live. Immense live, they're class. Definitely mm-hmm. worth having a, having a listen to. All right, and then the second question that we've been asking everybody is the whole music scene goes head-to-head, throwing bows, massive scrap. Who's coming out on top? Who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. As in between everyone here who wins, or between like Newcastle and like Manchester who wins? There are no rules. No this rules. my produ- my producer was just like, hey, it'd be really funny if you asked people about this. And I don't know. Now it's a, Tom now Wass we do. Scrap Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh my god, Tom Wass. <laughs> our 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 guitarist Tom Wass. He's a brutal man when he has to be. He can be stern. Top five Parkview moment of all time, right? We were in the we were in like the Huddersfield. little like cupboard room of Huddersfield where they, they they put everyone to like you know before you go on sort of thing. And there was this mm. big puppet with like a plastic head but like puppet body of Donald Trump. And we were all just kind of you know joking half and like shaking and photos with him, shaking the hands with the yeah. president. As you do, as you do. might have got the video of it. But he was just went. He said something like, "I'm sick of this," and pinned him against the wall, started punching him in the face. It's not and I was to dying. I He's was not dying. Be with, with Tom it Watts. was so funny. I think Tom Watts would win the fight out of everyone he in the would. whole music scene. He would. Would ever. I'd put money on it. <laughs> I'd put money on it. And I think with that, we'll probably head off to your couch concert. Uh, I don't. Do you guys know what you're going to be playing? Um, or do you want to leave it a mystery? Let's leave, we'll leave it a mystery. mystery. Yeah. Yeah. A nice surprise for everyone. He's lost his mind And I think he's lost himself He's a poison picked out Flipped from his mother's shell Ears are bleeding From stained sound cloud tunes Interrupted by the red and blue Said the common view So he runs fast on his feet Hearing sirens Falling through The back streets Tell him son You'll end up in trouble soon You know Don't you think you should do Just as you don't do And that's when He's on his face 
Well, that was lovely. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> lovely jubbly. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, yeah, guys. Thank you, thank you very much. Great, great fun. Um, is there anything that you want to plug before we get going? Um, our Instagram is yeah, Parkview, Parkview Official. We do have Twitter and TikTok as well that you'll be able to find us on if people actually start tweeting yeah, stuff on it. Blow the dust off that um, TikTok. We also we're doing like we're gonna try and get across <laughs> to as many cities in the UK as we can over the next sort of like twelve months. So we're gonna be Maybe hopefully in, in we're hopefully gonna be in Liverpool. We're hopefully gonna be in Manchester, That's Leeds. Cool. Liverpool gig. Um so Liverpool we're playing 9th of December, which is a Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's a Saturday. It is a Saturday. Was it? Oh. Mm-hmm. At the Shipping Forecast in the yep. city centre. Um, great pub. Not been to a gig there, but it's a great pub. And I look forward to so, seeing yeah. people mm-hmm. and having pints. We're hoping to get everywhere. We're hoping to do like London, Sheffield, Leeds as well. So yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? Keep an eye out for the two new singles coming out at round about Christmas time. Yeah. Early Christmas present. Let's and see. in the comments below, <laughs> leave us any sort of covers that you want to see us do. All right. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. And thank you so much for tuning in.